I'm excited to announce that a sale between myself and Kingwin is happening that will be including the big games out right now like GTA 5 and Witcher 3. I'll leave a link in the description, highly recommend checking it out. Hey guys, what is up and I finally welcome you all to a new episode of the Digino series featuring Vi. If you end up enjoying this one, don't forget to hit the like button, but let's go into her abilities. Vi's passive grants her a shield when damaging an enemy with an ability, but her W, though still considered an ability, does not proc the passive. Keep in mind that when charging your Q ability, you are still able to use summoner spells and items even though you cannot use any other abilities. Speaking of which, a very common thing is to flash Q a target. The charging of her Q auto cancels after 4 seconds, but it still goes on full cooldown with no mana refunded, unlike something like Varus Q. However, the catch is, if you ever get CC'd by something like a stun while you're still charging the Q, not only do you get refunded half of the mana, but her Q only goes on a very short cooldown, rather than the full cooldown again. When hitting a champion with the Q ability, not only does the champion get knocked back, but Vi's Q ability ends at that spot. But if you use the Q through monsters and or minions, not only does she go through all of them and to the end of the path of her Q ability's range, but she puts them all in a straight line somewhat in front of her, ready to use her E ability. Interestingly enough, the slow that is automatically applied from Vi's Q as you are charging it can actually be reduced by tenacity or anything that removes the effectiveness of slows, such as the swiftness mastery in the defense tree. Denting blows Vi's W will still apply its effect if parried or blocked, but not if she is blinded or her attacks are dodged. Spell Shield seems to block Vi's Q damage and the application of her W from the Q, however her W itself cannot be blocked on the third proc, assuming you auto attack the champion. After testing out her E a few times, it seems to be interacting strangely because Sivir still blocks and gets the mana back, but the full damage is still applying. And Vi's ultimate can be negated by Spell Shield, however the Vi will still charge to the champion. Vi is able to have multiple partial Ws active at the same time, while someone like a Vayne with a similar ability cannot. The W proc attack will apply on hit effects, for example critical strikes, sheen and so on, but it will not proc lifesteal. However on the flip side, her E ability can apply critical strikes, sheen effects and even lifesteal. Vi's E's ability's bonus damage can be applied to towers, but only if she is targeting the tower specifically. The AoE portion of the E ability will not hit the tower. Don't forget that Vi's E is an auto attack reset ability, so make sure to auto first and then use your E right after not only to do more damage, but to apply your W faster. Vi's ult is normally known to be very difficult to stop unless you have something like Spell Shield, but if you teleport away just as she ults, you can actually prevent it. However, the timing is very specific. Alright guys, let's go into some cool facts and lore about Vi. Did you know that she was designed by a writer named Gypsy Lord, who also made Jinx, Nar, and the newest champion coming soon, Echo. The voiceover work done for Vi was by someone named Sia Court. Most champions have been revealed by a sneak peek, yet Vi was the first champion to be revealed by a feedback thread on the forums. Did you know that a lot of the champions take about half a year to be created from start to finish, yet Vi took nearly two years to develop? Vi's E and ultimate abilities, Excessive Force and Assault and Battery, are named after real-life criminal charges. Excessive Force is a name for police brutality, while Assault and Battery are two violent crimes, Assault being the threat of violence while Battery being the actual physical violence. Vi's page was graffitied on just before the release of Jinx, who is speculated to be her sister, but is known to be her rival. To further back this up, the Hermit from the Howling Abyss has a quote towards Vi. You look like your sister. Wait, I'm not supposed to talk about that. The Latin word vis means force, which is very relatable to Vi's playstyle and character. But on top of that, Vi or Vi is the Roman numeral for six, which can mean many things. For instance, one thing it could be referring to is her partner Caitlyn and how Vi has her six, meaning her back. Or two, which I think is much more believable, it could be from her lore stating how she joined her former gang at the age of 6, because Jinx is actually seen as the number 10, because when she did graffiti Vi's pages as you saw earlier, on one of the pages she wrote X was here, X of course being the Roman numeral for 10, but now that Echo has been released with his lore, everything makes a lot more sense, because there's a strong assumption that Echo was part of the gang that Vi and Jinx were a part of as well, because if you take a very close look at Echo's weapon, you can 
can actually see the Roman numeral XII, which means 12. So this does suggest that they were all in the same group until Vi left and Echo now calling her a sellout. Hey sellout, you forgot your roots Vi. And on top of everything else, they're all designed by the same person. But from all this, let us go into Vi's lore. Though born in Zon and growing up a villain, she now serves Piltover's police force alongside Caitlyn. In her younger years, she learned to rob and cheat to get by, while life on the streets taught her self-reliance. At 6, she was taken in by a ragtag group of criminals, and her life changed when an invasion of a mining facility went wrong, and she decided to be a hero and save the innocent workers, and this is where she made her Hextech gauntlets, by improvising with a robotic mining rig that she found. Following that event, Vi severed her connections with her crew, improved her gauntlets, and eventually got recruited by Caitlyn as a way to pay her debt to society. According to a writer named Oh Mike Goodness, Vi is actually left-handed. And also according to a League of Legends sale page, Vi weighs about 8,000 pounds with her gauntlets on. How she walks around is beyond me. Vi has had earlier trauma while also being orphaned at a young age and from this does not remember any family she may have had, including any sisters, even if she wanted to. Also, Vi's name comes from the tattoo on her cheek and not the other way around and was just giving everyone the name that is presented on her cheek with the tattoo because she felt like that was the most distinguished thing about her and whether or not she received the real name she does not remember. Did you know that if Vi and Caitlyn are on the same team in a regular League of Legends game, they both get a buff called On The Case. Though it does not seem to add any special bonuses like it did before such as giving plus 1 move speed and plus 1 bonus gold if assisting each other. But Vi has 3 special quotes towards Caitlyn whenever Caitlyn uses her ultimate. Yeah! Teamwork! High five cupcake! Boom! Headshot! On the flip side however, she also has 3 quotes if an enemy Caitlyn ults her. Nice shot, Cupcake. Oh, was that supposed to hurt, Kate? Nope. And a few taunts toward Caitlyn that leave a debuff on the Kate player that stays until death or damaging the Vi. Care for a spot of tea? Or maybe a spot of punch in the face? Oh, look at me. I'm on the case. And did you know that she also has a unique quote whenever ulting Jace? Hey Jace, power slam! Vi gets a debuff called Catch Me If You Can whenever playing versus a Jinx, and this may be related to the movie Catch Me If You Can. The login theme for Vi was sung by Nikki Taylor, the lead singer of the band Running The Risk. Vi does have the shortest name within League of Legends, only being two letters. There is a visual indication on Vi's back being the blue light to show whether or not her passive is ready to proc. Vi does share a quote with the Dunkmaster Darius himself. Get dunked! Get dunked! And she also shares a quote with Olaf. Boom, baby! Boom, baby! Vice quote, Here I come to save the day. Or wreck it. Could refer to Mighty Mouse, who would say that quote in the opening theme. Neon Strike Vi can take her glasses on and off, being the first skin to feature such an interaction. The recall animation of the skin has her pose similarly to Frankie from One Piece. An easter egg in Officer Vi's splash art shows Jinx sitting in the donut at the back. Apparently this skin was inspired by the work of Two Gold. She shares this officer theme with Caitlyn, Trundle, and Volibear. Debonair Vi was released as a tribute to Valentine's Day in the year 2014. And this theme is shared with Jace, Ezreal, and now Galio. Alright guys, that unfortunately is it of this Digino you know episode featuring Vi. It was a pretty big episode, so if you did enjoy it, please throw in a like because it took a lot of time. Also, definitely check out the sale that is done by myself and Kingwin over at their website. I have a link underneath the video in the description. But I hope you guys did enjoy this episode. Please check out the other episodes of this series and my other videos as well. And I'll see you for the next one. Peace. <laughs>